supporters, they get a chance to see their team doing so well and so many good young players playing well and, you know, a lot of them international players as well. So, so really good for the supporters. For set pieces, do you need obviously help as well from the ref because otherwise it's uh, we create chaos in, in, in the box. That's um, it's a, It was a foul on Alisson. If they win without that goal, I'm fine with it. But with that goal, it's, it's, it feels just a bit like it's not right. First goal was probably a little bit dubious. You know, could have went either way there. Um, with a couple of blocks on him, second goal, it was a well worth set piece really. But you know, these are something we need to work on because teams will be watching this and be looking at our, our defensive set pieces and seeing potentially a weakness. So we need to make sure we, we correct that as soon as possible. We had now a really long run without uh, without a defeat. We actually never thought about it to be honest. We had too many draws from our perspective in that in that spell as well. So and now we are. Uh, this run is over. Good. Let's start another run. To get down here to do the interviews, we've got to come through loads of West Ham fans. Some of them are talking about challenging for the title. Can West Ham do that this season? Uh, do you know, I want to be really positive all the time. And I'd like to turn around and say, that's what we can do. But I don't see that at the moment. I see us challenging whoever are the top four. But we're certainly not getting carried away. We're still, still pretty new to it here. And, uh, and it's feeling really good at the moment, I've got to tell you. Well, West Ham fans should be allowed to get carried away a little bit, shouldn't they? Because there's so much to admire about them at the moment. And not for the first time, we're going to look at set pieces because they are nailing them. Yeah, West Ham had a plan today, a uh, game plan, and they executed it brilliantly. And part of that was the set pieces and the corners. And they had three corners today. Dangerous, two goals, and they hit the bar off, off the other one. So... Um, it's definitely a massive part of their game. And, and Jurgen Klopp is, you know, he's asking for a bit of help uh, for his goalkeeper. But I don't think Antonio's doing too much. He's just standing in the way. And I feel I feel like it's, you know, one where Alisson needs to be a little bit stronger and come and punch that. We've highlighted Ogbonna's arm. Yeah, it is in the air a little bit. But you would expect your goalkeeper to come and deal with that a little bit better because I don't think Antonio's doing too much. So that's Ogbonna fine for you? That's a goal. I think that that's a goal. I don't see where the infringement is in that one. Uh, they didn't learn their lesson because the second corner, they've hit the bar with Dawson. And the thing that, that puzzles me is that Alisson isn't asking for a, a defender either inside between him and Antonio or the other side to help him out a little bit. So he's getting caught up and distracted with what Antonio's doing, as we can see here. He's bothered with him, he's bothered about it, and he's not concentrating on where the ball is. Brilliant ball from, from Jared Bowen. Um, and that's straight off the training ground. Here we can see Antonio blocking the goalkeeper. Declan Rice is, has a nice little block, but it, which isn't a foul. I'm, just I'm, by standing there? Yep, yeah, just on the back of Van Dijk and Kurt Zuma. And that's not an easy header as well, so that's a tight angle. Great ball. That's something that they'd work on in the training pitch, and um, they've executed it brilliantly today. So if you were, if you were uh, in a side where the centre-forward was on the goalkeeper, mm -hmm. would, would you offer... I mean, I know you'd then vacate a different position, but would you offer or would you get a teammate to try and get in between goalkeeper and striker? Well, I think after the first goal straight away, um, you, you're going to try and set up a little bit differently, but I think that that's down to the goalkeeper normally. The goalkeeper will ask for help, and some goalkeepers like his defender inside mm. in between him and the striker and some like it on the outside and it's just so they can deal with that and let the goalkeeper focus on what he needs to focus on. But they're, they're clever routines for you. Yeah, especially yeah. the last one. It's a great ball. They've got good delivery from a lot of players, West Ham, and the, the ball in from Bowen, the block from Rice is, is, is on time. Antonio's distracting the goalkeeper and as I say, Zuma's got a tight angle in it, so it's a, it's a well worked goal. The, the other thing with West Ham analysis, right, is that it can often look quite similar week on week but that is because they're doing the same things over and over again consistently well. And they did it today against one of the best teams in Europe. They, they were magnificent. Only 31% possession. But it's what you do with that possession. They had a game plan. And I know it's straight from, from the off, really. I mean, when you look at the clip here, we look at the shape. They've got the 4 4 one, one, four, five, one at, at times. But everyone knows their jobs. Just highlighted Antonio there. First thing looking, running behind, occupy the defenders, get your team up the pitch. And that's what they did. Rice in midfield, excellent. You see Ben Rama, Bowen and Four Nels. The first thing they're thinking about is, can we get that counter attack? Can we get the ball forward quick? Rice again, have a, a magnificent game in there, but runners forward. West Ham know that Liverpool love Trent Alexander-Arnold, 
and Robertson to get their fullbacks really high. Talk about a defensive team. West Ham have got five players here trying to make a difference in the opposition half. Here, Johnson goes in behind. And as a defender, it's so difficult when the ball keeps going. You just get un unsettled. You see Antonio in the middle of the pitch. Look at the time it, it takes him to get. He thinks one touch there and he's, he's gone. And he's got runners in behind. On another day, he, he scores here, takes a better touch. Dawson came on for Agbonna, four nils. And this is, this is a goal. We talk about the, the runners, but they're running with intent. They're not just running for no reason. And it's lovely composure once you get in there. And they're doing this against Liverpool. They're not just a rich team in the Premier League. They're doing it against one of the best teams in the league. So it's also interesting in that, in an era where we talk so much about pressing and pressing and chasing, that they tend to hold, keep their shape, win it, and then break. So that's where the possession comes in, and they only yeah. get 31%. They all know their jobs. And that's what I love about David Moyes. He's always so organised. He's such an underrated manager. Now he's got a little bit more flair up front with them, the four I mentioned. But they've got to do something when they get in there. And when they're doing, they're taking the chances. Lots of debate about the Aaron Cresswell challenge. I'll come to you on it first, because Mike has changed his mind 17 times during the course <laughs> of the afternoon. So, it, 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 is he lucky? Uh, we well, both changed our mind all day. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you're newer, so it's <laughs> easier for me to put uh, him away. Listen, when, when we first saw it, I think we both said, not a foul, not a red. Uh, Correct. And then, as we've been watching it through the day, uh, and it, we've had the, you know, we, we can see it slowed down and, and a lot of replays of it. Maybe it is, maybe I think... At first, I just thought it's a good, solid tackle from Creswell, but when we see it like that... Um, it's you know, always going to look worse, slowed down. Yeah. But still, it is out of... It, Control. Out, yeah, his body's a little bit out of control, isn't it? I, VAR say th they didn't feel there was the intensity in it. So they, they said that's why they didn't overrule it, intensity. But, I mean, I, I don't particularly like this phrase, but you've seen them given, haven't you? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a red card, isn't it? When it's out of control, you talk about intensity, but end of the day, we, we, we've been told if, that, if a player does that sort of thing, it's going to be a red card. But at the end of that, a deserved win for West Ham, just to end on a positive. Ex excellent win for West Ham. Matt, was that from Jurgen Klopp? <laughs> Arsenal at home well in two weeks' time. Um, what are you laughing at? <laughs> so honestly, what, what that made me realise is that I'm, I'm delighted I'm not a manager listening to some of the questions that they uh, get asked. It's, it's, honestly, it's, it's just crazy. I, you could see why some of them get so angry and walk off or something, because... Some of the questions I find are questions, really, really, really bad for the managers. I feel like they come out of that point about uh, how difficult it is sometimes to do post-match interviews. I can imagine and defend our journalist corner here. <laughs> no, but I think it's important to listen to what the manager says and ask another question on what mm. you just said, rather than have a question in your mind. Let him answer it well, and then ask him the I same don't. question. No, 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 no not, you, not, not you, Steve. Not Speaking you. about that particular no, interview. <laughs> okay, sorry, right. sorry. Let's get back to the anger of Jurgen Klopp on the first goal. He thinks it's a clear foul on Alisson. Yeah, well, I said it at half time. I'm not going to change my mind at half time. I think he's again, he's occupied by Antonio. I think Ogbonna comes off the near post, eye on the ball, starting to move backwards. Yes, his arms are in the air, but he has to go in the air because he's moving backwards and he's jumping. And if that was a Liverpool goal, it'd be hypocritical of me to say, oh, I think it's fine. I, I actually think it, the right the goal arm was okay. of Ogbonna is what Jurgen. Excuse me. The right arm of Ogbonna. Yeah, it is does. What Jürgen it does. Klopp but he has to jump to get some elevation to get a header. So. Yeah, I, I'm, remember happy as well, Steve. I'm happy for that goal to be given, to be honest. Re remember as well, like, yes, Antonio's touching him, yes, when he's, but he's moved away from Antonio. Agbonna doesn't know. That could be one of... Yeah. For all Agbonna could knows. Be, that could defender. be Van Dijk behind him, So it? you've got the goalkeeper coming out to him and Agbonna has not looked for him. He's not put his arm where he can impede him. He's just gone up. Mm. So you look at Alisson and Alisson has got it all wrong. He's got it all wrong. Um, in the end, the ball's gone yeah. in. It's... And if that was Van, if that was, that's the man who's been a manager. If, if that's that was your Van team Dijk and your goal, Fabianski, I'd well, expect Liverpool to be given the goal as well. You know, if, if Van Dijk's okay, gone up fine. and Fabianski was the goalkeeper, I'd hate of it to, to have been disallowed. Okay. So I'm happy with the West Ham goal. Manager's point of view. If that's your team and your goalkeeper, what are you saying? Oh, foul. Foul. <laughs> you want, I want my goalkeeper to be protected, like Jurgen Klopp wants him to be protected. I'm David Moyes, I'm saying no foul. <laughs> <laughs> you asked him if he was a manager, and that's what he just said. What, what he's done is there, he's got himself in the position where he's having to have a standing jump. He's timed it all wrong. He's got himself occupied mm. with Mikel. 
Right. Uh, so Tony just re the, I, I'll he, rephrase he, that. He, he What's the five. former manager's opinion? Is that a foul or...? I think it's a foul. A foul, OK. I think it's a foul, because what, what, exactly what you said, he leads with his right arm. He leads with his right arm. If that's a header there, another defender going there, he leads with his right arm, he elbows him in the, in the face and, and the referee gives a foul. And probably books him. Let's see what Derma Gallagher thinks. Happy with the decision, Dan? I didn't think it was a foul at half time. I still don't think it's a foul, Steve. I but a nice one, Dem. Not changing not your mind, Dem. Dem. Nice Change your Dem. mind, Dem. <laughs> 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 I, I think it's a good goal. I think the keeper comes. Um, he's got ample time to come. I don't think he's strong enough. I think he's he's from behind. I think he's got the ascendancy because he he sees where Bonner is. Like Bonner doesn't know where he is. Mm. But for me, you know, I think still pictures, you know, not always the best to look at. But you you see point of contact and such like. But when you see it, I don't think he does enough and I don't think mm. Agbonna does too much wrong. So, I think goal. Mm. I think we've had three like this this season. We had another one with West Ham at Everton early in the season with Pickford. Um, so, the referees are consistent in allowing challenges like this now and not overprotecting the goalkeepers as, as the accusation was before. West Ham again. I mean, I think it's a ploy for them to be very physical. Mm. Um, to occupy the goalkeeper. Uh, and I think Agbonna there, when he lifts his arm, he knows the goalkeeper's on his way out and he's trying to do everything he can to obstruct him. Maybe, Tim. You know, I think, uh, you know, you're a manager. You know, you have to do your prep work and that's what teams do. But I still think that um, because uh, Alisson's coming from behind, he has his tendency Ooh. because he's got more to go through. Not he bad. can see where Agbonna is. Mm. Uh, Agbonna can't see where he is. He doesn't know at what point he's going to come yeah. to him. So... On that basis, that's why I would rule a goal. Tim, if that, if this, I'm playing devil's advocate here, of course. That makes a change. If, if, if you swap Alisson for Virgil van Dijk and that ball goes in, is it a foul? I think if he, if he jumps with his arm like that and, and Virgil's, Virgil's behind him, Virgil's head's coming into it, I think he elbows him, I think it's even a card. I think, I think you're not allowed to lead with your arms now. We see it time and time again. Now, talking of cards, okay. Jurgen Klopp used the word reckless with Aaron Cresswell's mm. uh, challenge. It was only eight minutes into the game, this. Oh, well, we, we, again, we, we referenced this at half-time. All, all three of us didn't like it at all. It we reckless. all said it was reckless. It is reckless. We, it, we know he's going to win the ball, but we also know that, in his own mind, he knows about this follow-through. Because you don't challenge like that if you don't want to. You win the ball, you kick it out. That is a reckless challenge. And I said, that was half an hour after we seen Mason Holgate get sent off for the same type of yeah. challenge. And you know what? Naughty challenge. You know why that's reckless as well, Dern? Because people will say, people will say that, yeah, but he's come off the ball and the ball's made his foot blast up. It, he's come in at such a, a, a reckless angle that his ball's come off the his foot's come off the ball, and it could easily have gone if his leg's standing, bang, straight into the leg. So it's reckless. And they've um, looked at it time and time again in VAR and come up with no sending off. No foul. No foul at no, the time, no foul no at the time no on the field, the time. but Ridiculous. VAR have looked at that, yeah. like you have. It's a red card. It's a red card, and I tell you, he gets away with it. I used to do that for a living. He, get, <laughs> he gets away with one there, Cresswell, because if you see it in real time, where the fans behind, do you see the reaction from their West Ham fans? Mm. Straight away, they're up. Sometimes it can't be a goal. You know, it's like, it has to be a tackle. He gets them going. The whole the place just lifted. Yeah. It lifted and, and it, it gave the momentum to, to West Ham after that tackle when, when Jordan just hit the ground. Jordan's done plenty of them. But you know, you give yeah. and take them. Mm. He's got away with one today, Cresswell. It should be a red card. Mm. No, I mean, explain to us why that isn't reckless then. Well, it, I think it is reckless and reckless is yellow card, actually, Steve. You know, it's... Um, What's your crowd? I, I think the fact that um, he hasn't followed through like uh, Holgate did, you know, it's the point of contact with Holgate. He's gone through with his studs. He's caught him in the back of the calf, high up. This one, it's almost where he catches him, it's almost shin on shin. And I think that's what saved him. If, if you see, he hasn't actually dug his studs into him like Holgate did. Dermot, he's totally out of control of his body going yeah. in for that. And I... the fact that he's landed on that ball, him, there, yeah, look, he could take his foot out of that because he's 60-40 for me. He could have uh... easily taken... I think that Cresswell's is reckless because he's gone on the ball, then his foot could go anywhere yeah. off of the back of that. So that's reckless. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. the same. There's no, I mean, I know there's different challenges, but there's no difference for me in this. The intent Shouldn't was be a the same. Punishment. The intent mm. was the same. You are winning the ball and you are following through and you're catching them. You are catching them. Yeah. The right leg comes up and around. Otherwise, you're in control and you're just winning the ball and clearing yeah. out. Look at the right leg yeah. finishes up in the air. With Cresswell's tackle, he's shrewd with it. Yeah. 
he's a shrewdy with, with that tackle. With Holgate, it's just blatant. Mm. He's almost saying, send me off. He's got the up because he's come on. He's put him on in midfield. He's give the ball but away five times then? over the time. When you're no. looking at that in VAR, should Shouldn't. that make any, any no. difference to the VAR? No, that's official? why he's got away with it. No, I think that's why he's got away with it. It's because mm. Aaron Cresswell is an experienced player. Rather than so blatant, leaves his leg yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Cresswell tries to wrap the other way around. Because what Dermot's looking at, shin on shin, Dermot's looking at his right leg. It's not his right leg. It's the other one. It's the left leg where he catches on the right shin of Henderson or the right inside of the knee of Henderson. You know, it's not the right right one. Look at it. Look at his straight leg. It's inside of Jordan's left right knee. Now, watch. There. It's not the shin on shin on the right leg to right leg. Mm. And if he, if, he's, if he plants his foot there, Jordan Henderson, he breaks his, his leg. leg yeah. Exactly. Or he does, or he does his control. crucial. Look, he's yeah. out of control there, look. Bam. And that is where they, they're going to have to be careful with stuff like that because I'm, I'm really pleased that Jordan Henderson isn't really badly injured because for him to not even get a yellow card for that, you know what I mean? Mm. If, if, if I'm in the VAR, I'd be very disappointed with myself looking at that in hindsight. I'd, I'd be disappointed seeing that. Dermot? Well, I, I think he has got lucky, there's no doubt about that. I think he's got lucky because, as I say, it's the point of contact. I think he hasn't hit him with the studs into the leg like uh, Holgate did. So I think that's what saved him. But th the fact remains, it is not a nice tackle. The unfortunate thing is the VAR can only go red or leave it alone. And I mm. think he didn't think it was red. So therefore, I think Cresswell got really, really lucky because he didn't get punished at all. He didn't even give a free kick away. OK, Demon, thank you very much. Just one quick one before you go. If there was VAR when Tim Sherwood was playing, how many instances per 90 minutes would you make? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm booked out at seven. I haven't got time to answer that. <laughs> Tom Andermann, thank you very Cheers, much Dan. indeed. You're that was best, a big um... point. <laughs> and they are backing him at the moment, and this is one of the reasons. 23 points into the top three, above Liverpool, level on points with the champions, and three points behind the leaders, Chelsea. What does that do to the West Ham dressing room to put in a performance and get a result about, against one of the big boys like that? It's huge. What Moise is saying there, what he told him at half-time, you know what, we can get out of these guys, we've got confidence. Let's get yeah. out of them, let's step into them a little bit and see what we can do on the counter-attack. And they caught them time and time again in the breakaway. We talked about foul now, uh, four nows. Jared Bowen getting in support of Mikel Antonio. Ben Rama, you know, I thought he might have come off earlier and he put a negative change on. He didn't. He made a few negative changes towards the end. He was really protecting what they had. Um, but they deserved it. And I think the confidence what that breeds. I mean, you beat one of the big boys. I mean, Liverpool are one of the best teams in the world mm. out there. You know, You've so got City and Chelsea to play in the next point yes, the got, as well. They won't be scared. They won't be scared who they play. You know, they've earned the right now. They're up there in third position. No one expected them to be third. No one expected them to... Well, I certainly didn't mm. expect them to emulate what they did last year. I thought it was an overachievement. Perhaps there's not. And come January, we sort of check the guy there, the, the investor. You know, he's, he's invested into the club because they've signed two Czech players and they understand that they've been absolutely brilliant, two foul and two Czech. He might say, you know what? Let's go and explain it again. I trust this manager. Knows what he's he doing. shows the right it's game to come obvious. and watch, hasn't he? Yeah. 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 Two victory against yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. Absolutely. You're going to invest. Listening. You're going to invest after this game. <laughs> he's been listening to us for years talking about this in the London Stadium. There's no atmosphere and all that. Don't matter how many running tracks around the outside of that pitch. It sounded pretty good there today, and the, and the, and the players responded from it. Listen, they might spend again. Why would you not trust this man now? I think he's done his. He's yeah. done his rehearsal absolutely. there. Absolutely. David Moyes, give him the money. Let him spend. See where you can end up. Champions League. You know? <clears throat> Aim for the stars. He's going to. Need, I think he's going to need another striker. That's for sure. But, but what that does um, for West Ham for me is when you beat a team like Liverpool at this, and we're talking about Liverpool. Twenty-five unbeaten Liverpool. Absolutely Liverpool. Then it doesn't matter who comes, and it doesn't matter where you go to, because mm. like you said, the second half, you said let's just go for them. You said they tried it last season. Or they've tried it before, and I think that's when Mo Salah scored when they they beat them. Yeah. Um, but this is a different, um, different West Ham side with different confidence, and you know with players who he's got five or six players who are playing the best football of their lives up to this point. So you should go for them, you know, because what, even if West Ham lost this game, it's, it's not going to yeah. look bad on them. So you might as well go mm. for them because now they're in the top three. Yes, we saw they've got City and Chelsea to come, but when they come, they won't be thinking, oh, let's be scared of them. Let's go for yeah. them again, see what yeah. happens. And they deserve it, don't they? It's, this is not a fluke. You know, from the most the points they've ever had at this I know, stage. And from the beginning of the season, they've spent time at the top of the league. Yes, they've drifted down a little bit, but they spent time at the top of the league for a number of, of weeks. 
They've drifted down, but they've always been in that upper echelons of the of the Premier League. So for them to jump back into third is not is not a surprise yeah. at all. And the fact that they are joint with Man City, who everybody regards as the title favourites, three behind Chelsea, gone above Liverpool. I mean, it's an incredible achievement. Yeah. And who's to say that? You know, when, when they go to Man City or when Chelsea turn up at, at the stadium, they can't go and give them a run for the money and maybe take points off them. Yeah. And, and they're that good at the moment and, and that's dangerous. Says they're playing Thursday night, which yeah. seems to have been a big issue to other clubs over the years. Mm. Yeah. Not at the moment for West Ham. We'll see if no. that catches up with them. Hopefully it won't. Mm.